This is your general tarot reading for Leo, Sun, Moon and Ascendant or Rising Sign for the month of December. Leo, let's get to it. Let's do as we always do. We're going to shuffle these cards and we're going to wait on all the right ones to come out for you, my love. And in the meantime, we're going to talk about the energies that you may feel throughout the month. So we have to begin. Still feeling the effect of that November full moon that happened in Gemini and it happened for you in your 11th house. So what could have happened here, Leo, is that there may have been some unusual communication between you and a group of people, you and your circle of friends, even teams in work, even social media, something that frustrated you or angered you within a group of people. It could have been that you were just scrolling through social media and you saw a bunch of stuff and it just made you mad. It made your blood boil. Um, but it seems that the worst of that is now over. You've put an end also to maybe something that you were doing with a group of people. It could be a, a project that you were doing with a team and work. It could have been something you were doing within a society, within a sports team or anything like that. A group project has come to an end. And maybe some fear and concern over things that you were doing on the internet for those of you who work on social media or who work with cutting edge technology. Some fears you had around that. It's finally like, I just don't care about that anymore. I, I've just a totally new way of seeing this. There's a new path that I've logically worked it out. I've been able to figure something out and communicate something better so that I'm not so stressed out and worried about something to do with a group of friends or something to do with teams in work or the social media scene. Yeah. Um, also, the 11th house where the full moon was for you is a lot to do with where you receive rewards, where you're allowed to be in a position of success, where you're given a big clap on the back and saying, well done to you. So again, it could mark a period where there was some success for you towards the end of November. And you're just wrapping all of that up now. Yeah. Because what do you want to do? You want to float on the back of some success that you had. And you want to turn it into something more personal and more creative, perhaps. And the reason is because your ruler, the sun, is in the fifth house. And the fifth house is where we have absolute pleasure doing things from the heart. It's also where we want to embody the spirit of something, where we want to step out and be the face of something, be seen as an individual because you've left behind maybe worrying about what friends think of you, what groups think of you, what people think of you, trying to fit in, always trying to fit in and follow the fashion and follow the trend. Now you're saying, enough with that. I'm going to step out and just be sparkly all on my own, doing my own thing, loving my life, being just out there celebrating and certainly putting my mark on everything that I'm doing, particularly if it's something you're doing creatively. It's like there's no point in following the herd or following the crowd. It's got to be my face out there. It's got to be me leading this and driving this in my own way. Like Frank Sinatra said, I did it my way. That's it's kind of your theme this month. I did it my way. Yeah. And your way is the fun way, Leo. Your way is the expressive way. Your way is the one that doesn't give a damn about what other people think. It's shine regardless. Shine because I do it better than the rest of you. <laughs> it's a bit like that, Leo. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to just blend in and kind of fit in with crowds and teams and just agree with everybody and say, yes, we're all on the same page. We're not. Because I shine differently to everybody and it's time that they all saw it. <laughs> yeah. So you're feeling that vibe very much so. Now the fifth house has a lot to do with love and romance. Being out there doing your sparkly glittery thing. Shining with your beautiful Leo energy and glow. And stepping out as an individual. Showing your skills and talents off. And attracting love in the process. So that's really nice. Actually, Scorpio has a very similar energetic vibe to you this month. They're also showing off their skills and talents. So you could maybe bump into a Scorpio along the way and 
Maybe say, I see your glow, I see your glow, let's mutually glow. <laughs> so it could be a bit like that for some of you. Now, on the 1st of December, Mercury is retrograding in Scorpio. Mm, okay, yeah, I see why everything's happening uh, in Scorpio for you there, or why you could be doing something similar with Scorpio. It does go direct on December 6th, but it's all done in the 4th house. Now, the 4th house is where we are in touch with our emotions, where we really get back home to how we feel about things. Um, fourth house is a lot to do with home, but the first home you have, the first place of rest and solitude is home in the heart, home in your emotions. So you've had a little bit of time to think a few things over, Leo, uh, about who you care about, who you give your heart to, who you give your emotions to, who you care for on a real level, on a real, real level. Who do you care for? Maybe the moon at the end of uh, November said, do I really care about some of these groups of people? My heart's not in it. So you had time to go back and say, well, who do I care about? Yeah. Who is my tribe? Who are my soul people? Who are on the same side as me, thinking the same way as me, maybe even wanting to support me as I step out and be fabulous Leo this month, shining in the fifth house. Who's, who's got me when I do this? Um, so you're nursing a few hurts as you push maybe some people or situations away, but you're also reclaiming some power because all your mind is now into figuring out how do I get my emotions organized and in check? Yeah. Could mark a period where looking back was a thing. In the first week of December, you could find yourself looking back over some conversations, over some loves, over some experiences, and shedding a few tears over that. And it's not about being sad. It's kind of like, ah, oh, when I think of that situation or that family member or that thing that happened years ago, just brings a bit of a tear to my eye. So it's not tears of sadness, but more like tears of letting it flow and letting it go. And even happy tears of remembering something. So it's just a little bit teary at the start of the month. And don't think that you're losing it. Don't think that you're going mad because you're not on your own, Leo. There will be a bunch of other shiny, happy Leos having a little tear or two. So when it happens to you, just sit back and say, well, Leos, we're all in this together and send some good vibes to your fellow Leos because they could be doing exactly the same thing as you. That's your first tribe, your Leo tribe. So send some good vibes, as I said, out to them. But the fourth house is literally to do with your home. So what you could find is that as you enter the month, you've had some fabulous ideas about how to redecorate your home. Spruce it up, do it up, hang decorations, do something like that. The home this month is really where the Leo heart is. And you want your heart and emotions to reflect the energy in your home. It could be about, you know, just clearing spaces within your home, not just to beautify them, because, okay, you love having a beautiful home, but it's not just about that. It's about finding spaces where you can connect to your home. So maybe it's about hanging, you know, old photographs of family members. It could be about designating one corner to memories or to a feel-good corner where you buy soft furnishings or good quality, I don't know, things so that you can nestle in and feel comfortable and cosy with, I don't know, new pajamas, new socks, new things where it's just all about my home is my haven. And that feels really nice for you. And particularly also because on December 2nd, Venus also goes into the fourth house. So you'll be spending a bit of money. You'll be spending a few coin on making your home feel warm, feel welcoming, and really get that whole glowy spirit, particularly those of you celebrating for the, the holiday season this month. It's all about 
getting wrapped around that energy. And Venus wants to feel really happy doing that. So it's very, very nice. Now, some of you, because there's a lot of energy, if you're looking for love this month, you could be really doing up your home, cleaning it up and making it a real good vibe place with good music and good atmosphere, stocking up your fridge, stocking up the food pantry to invite maybe a new love back for dinner. That could very much be a thing that could be happening for you because, as I said, your heart is at home this month. So if you want to invite good friends or that one person that you've had your eye on, maybe it's a candlelit dinner with good music happening in the background where they get to feel your glow, essentially, through the environment that you've created. And like I said, Venus always wants to spend a bit of cash. Don't go too wild. Mercury retrograding there in the fourth house just has you thinking, I need this, I need that, and I'll get that, and I'll get that, and blah, blah, blah. And then afterwards you regret, or at least your bank account or your credit card will regret the things that you might bought. So have some, have some time to really think about how you can do this without spending too much money. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. You can really do it. Um, other things that are happening, December 7th, there's a new moon in Sagittarius in the fifth house. New moon, new love, new romance, and for some of you, even new children. Yeah, this could be the season. It is the season to get jolly, but it's also the season maybe to bring in the energy of new children. So if that's something that you want to see happen, the new moon, start making your wishes upon that and see the magic maybe come true there. But the fifth house is so much about doing things from the heart. It's everything, your relationships, your friendships, your environment, the work that you do, the things that have purpose and meaning in your life. They've got to be expressed through your heart. And if it doesn't vibe on some heart level with you, it's a waste of time. So you're kind of filtering, you're using your heart this month as a filter of what, what's, what's really worth it in your life right now. What can you give your heart and soul to and just let everything else die away. Prune the rose bush of your environment. You know, take only the good stuff and weed out the rest because it's all about the heart and optimism because this is what's going to bring you into the future yeah yeah now so that's a lovely energy on the new moon uh, december 12th mercury changes and he goes into sagittarius again in the fifth house so let me just show you something leo you have your ruler the sun in the fifth house you have the new moon on december 7th in the fifth house You've Mercury on December 12th rambling into the fifth house. And you have Jupiter, the big friendly giant, the expander, the one who just wants to shower you with gifts. Where? In the fifth house. So all the energy is saying, it doesn't matter how shit 2018 has been, 2017, 2016, it doesn't matter what you're being asked to do here is to expand on what your heart wants because your heart is leading the way, really. And anything that doesn't vibe on a heart level for you is exactly the shit that you've got to let go of. If it doesn't make you happy, let it go. If it doesn't fill you with a good vibe, let it go. If you look at it and it's not pretty and it's not creative and it's not pleasant, and it doesn't fill you up with joy, let it go. Let it go. You know, too often we keep things hanging around us that don't make us happy, but we're just used to them. Sometimes we even get used to being unhappy. And we say, well, this seems to be my default setting now. <laughs> I just got to keep going on and being unhappy. But, you know, this is the way it is. This is the way the whole year has been. So this is the way now. This is where it's going to change. It's got to change, and you have to make that change. See, we always have to meet the universe halfway. We don't get to sit back, 
lie back and say, okay, universe, what now? I've, I'm just going to sit here and just keep it coming. No, you play this game. Fifth House is all about playing games, taking chances, rolling that dice, being a risk taker. So make the first big risk you take uh, being the risk towards moving towards your happiness. And doing things, as I said, that only your heart wants to do. And you're saying, that that can't be possible. I've got things, I mean, I've got things that I need to do. I have responsibilities within my family. I have responsibilities in my work. I've, I, I can't just look to everything in my life and expect them to be shining and sparkling and glowing like Christmas twinkling lights. Why not? Why not? That's the big question this month. Why not? Everything should be like that now because the magic is all supporting that for you now. If it's not twinkling and glowing, plug it out and throw it in the trash. Really? 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 Now, we have the sun on December 21st moving into Capricorn. Capricorn always wants to take things a little bit serious, you know. You've got Saturn and Pluto also in Capricorn. It's about, come on, empower yourself, step up, take responsibilities, take this seriously. And what does the sun, who's now giving you more energy to take this seriously, what, what is it? In your health, in the space that you work on a day-to-day -day level, in your office, in your work life, it's like, come on, come on, Leo, darling, take this seriously. No more playing around. You've got all this joy and happiness springing out now from your heart. Let's clear it all down. Let's get this shit organized so that you have a proper space to create. You have a proper space to work in a happy environment, that you have the type of work that you're doing that makes you feel that you're making something significant happen in your life. Take this shit seriously. Take your joy and fun seriously and streamline that. Put plans into place to make that happen. Organize it, put a system in place so that it just clears the decks and says, now there's space for my heart to move and maneuver. And I've got a system in place to support that. Yeah. Some of you could really, really now be taking it seriously about moving into the type of work that just shines. The entertainment industry, music, theatre, taking care of children also, the games industry, the gambling industry, high risk stuff, high risk finance, high risk something, anything that gets your blood moving and your heart pumping and where it's, you know, exciting and thrilling. That's where you want to be now. No more boring office work for you. You've got to be on your toes and you've got to be in the line of work now that allows you to create as you go and to express something very deep inside you. Yeah. And that makes you happy. So certainly working with children, working in the entertainment field, working where you get to stand out and shine. It's all over you, Leo, and it's your happy place to be. And the energy of the, of the sun is saying, take it seriously. Take fun seriously. And that will be a bit of a weird moment where you might say, here are all the fun things and loving things and creative things I want to do. But yet, it doesn't feel like fun right now. It feels that this is heavy. I have to focus heavy on this. The reason is, of course, that the heavy focus is so that you take it seriously, as I said. Yeah, take fun seriously. Now, December 22nd, there is a big time full moon happening in Cancer. And this is wonderful for you because that card just a couple of times started coming out and then didn't and then fell and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, challenges that you might meet throughout the month. But anyway, back to the full moon in Cancer. It's in the 12th house. And really, this is the energy of you saying, everything that's been happening to me for months and months now, everything that I've been, it's like been trying to push water up a hill, trying to shepherd fish. It's, it's been a hard task. And it has taken a bit of the joy out of my lovely Leo heart. But the 12th house here is saying, 
Let it go. Now I know there's the energy. I, I've read some comments with some, some of you guys leaving comments on my social media and so on that you're saying, I keep hearing this phrase, surrender, let it go, surrender, let it go. I'm up to here with surrendering and letting it go. I'm bored with that. I, it's all I seem to be doing is surrender, let it go, surrender, let it go, surrender, nothing's changing. What's going on here? Well, this is really the point that you've been building up to really, it, in terms of your inner emotions, uh, the full moon is finally giving you that opportunity to really release. Let go of the last year. Let go of the weird shit that's been happening to you. Let go of that feeling like the universe has its elbow on your head and is leaning on you. It's like, that's... Let it, let it go. And it's not even so much a thing that you have to say, let it go, let it go, let it go. It's like the universe will just step in and say, no, well, you don't need that anymore. You don't need all those emotional upsets. You don't need all those tears. You don't need all that pressure. It's just time to let it go. And it will open up this wonderful spiritual place, a place that's softer and gentle, where there's music, where there's tenderness, where there's solitude, where there's quietness, where there's faith, where there's prayer, where there's a reconnection to the, the vibe of the universe, where you feel plugged in a little bit and you say, ah, okay, okay, now I'm in that little zone, that stream of consciousness that allows me to let it go. I get it now. So there will be some prayers for those of you who pray. There will be some meditation. But mostly there will be just that feeling of, I get it now. I understand. I understand that I can let it go now. Yeah, it's quite a psychic time for you coming towards the end of the month. Um, some psychic connections. So do watch for dreams, dreams of your loved ones that have passed. Psychic dreams. Uh, or sign symbol and symbols, omens, seeing synchronicities, 11-11, all that type of thing. Watch out for that because it's the universe trying to say, yeah, you're here, you're with us, we have, we have you with this, we have the universe wrapped around you. As you're trying to find that beautiful space in your home where you're all blankets and things wrapped around you to feel good, the final thing at the end of the month is feeling the universe wrapping itself around you. And that's where Venus gets the most pleasure. So it's beautiful, beautiful. Now, Leo, we, ha we are waiting on four more cards. You know what's happening here, Leo? The cards are coming out and then they're falling back in. I don't know why your card's being very shy this month. <laughs> but either way, I'm going to have to choose four cards for you, so... Well, one card did come out, yeah, the Queen of Fire. You have the King and Queen of Fire. You have the Four of Pentacles. Two more, Leo. The Hierophant, or the Hierophant, yeah. And one last card. And the Eight of Swords. So, Leo, let's do this thing. The last reading of 2018. Let's move over and show the holiday cards. So, we open up with the energy of a kind of moon and Libra energy of trying to please everybody and pleasing nobody, trying to please everybody except pleasing yourself. So you're walking into the energy a bit like that. Now, where would that be? Okay, Mars is in Pisces in the eighth house of where we bond with other people, where we connect to other people. And that's in stark contrast to what the sun wants, which is in the fifth house of being an individual and looking for what you want in your life. So the first week in December is you coming out of this feeling of trying to please everybody, trying to accommodate everybody, trying to be the good citizen, trying to be the good partner, the good friend. And it, you just say, this is getting me nowhere, nowhere. And this, under the new moon energy, new moon card in the fifth house, yeah, the real wisdom that's coming up for you. Trust your psychic intuition. Trust the vibes you're getting off other people. Trust what, trust what you're hearing rather than what other people are telling you. 
because this is what's getting you out of that energy of being undecided. Undecided about how to move on within a relationship? Trust your intuition. And the intuition could get a little bit dark and weird because she sits in the underworld and she digs deep because that's where the truth is. The, the good stuff is always down deep below. And she's down there and she's throwing you up the truth and you're catching it and you're saying, I don't know if I really wanted to see that gift that you've given me from the underworld, but it's the truth. And the truth that's coming up from your psyche is do it your way. Do it your way, Leo, and shine. And it doesn't matter about other people this month. It's got to be you shining. It recovers your energy. And it takes you out of this moment of being undecided. You could be at a, a point as we enter the month about, should I do this? Should I do that? Too many options. Can't decide which is the best route for me to go. Now, Uranus retrograding in Aries is in the ninth house and he's in opposition with Venus in Libra. Maybe you're saying, I want to travel. I want to go places. Do I have the money for that? Do I need to ask somebody for money? Do I need to ask somebody to borrow money? What's going on here? Or um, how do I organize myself so that I can take a real long holiday or that I can go and study something? or that I can go and find people that are more spiritual or people that think like me. I want to move on with my spirituality. I want to open up to see new cultures. Maybe some of you could be undecided about a love relationship with a foreign person or traveling to meet new love. And you're saying, logically, this doesn't make sense, particularly financially and in my heart. You know, what's the barrier? Is it a communication barrier, a language barrier, a logistical barrier? So all this thing could be popping up and you're saying, how do I make that move? And the answer is trust what you want to do in your heart. It is always the right thing for you to do. Trust your intuition and all the pieces will fall into place. Yeah. And... When you do, you get to the point where you're defending something. You're defending your right to trust what you want to do. I just get the sense that there seems to be at the very beginning of the month a bunch of people trying to get you to jump through hoops, trying to get you to be something that you're not, trying to bend you, shape you, mold you, giving you advice. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I was you. I wouldn't do. And it's diminishing your shine and you're saying enough I've listened to my intuition and my intuition says that I have to step out and not fear the consequences of a backlash from other people because I can defend this I can stand up and defend my right to make my own decisions in my life and without other people getting all bent out of shape about it and they're saying oh you only think of yourself you're not thinking of me you're not thinking of us and you're saying, well, I'm thinking of me. I'm keeping my responsibilities together, but my priority this month is what I want. And maybe if you were a bit more supportive of me, you would know that. You've got to let me be talented. You've, you've got to let me show off my skills. You've got to let me change up what I'm doing so that it's more entertaining, that it's more glowy, more shining. And I'm going to defend that at any cost at any cost, because I know when I do that, it will get me into a much better position. I'll feel better about myself. I'll feel that I'm in control of what I'm doing. I'll feel more independent, maybe even financially independent. There's the energy here, Leo, of having to make this thing of breaking through what other people want, breaking through other people's prejudices, breaking through a glass ceiling, breaking through a limitation so that you can stand on your own and shine on your own and trusting the wisdom that you already have, trusting that you're smart. I get the feeling as we come into the month that somebody is questioning your ability to make a good judgment and they're making you feel a little bit like you don't know what you're doing, that you don't know what you're at. 
And it's kind of sitting into you also a little bit where you're saying, well, maybe I actually really don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'm just pretending I know what I'm doing and I really don't have all the information. That's bullshit, Leo. It's how you operate. You stand out and shine. And you, you have all the information you need and you've got to trust that. And with the energy of the ninth house, Uranus retrograding in Aries, which is who am I? I am ninth house. I am wise. I am able to understand my vision at ninth house. I'm able to stand on my own two feet. I'm able to follow a path that leads me to financial independence while at the same time not just doing it for the money, but doing it because this is my new purpose, this is my new reason to be. This is my new passion. It's what my soul needs me to do. And I'm confident to make that happen. And you sure are. Here are the first of your fire royals coming in. Fire Leo, the fiery energy of bringing something to life. And you really are bringing this energy to life. But there is a moment that you'll be doing something too. There'll be a shift of perspective. And I get that too with Uranus retrograding in the ninth house where we perceive things to be a certain way. And I think you're shifting your perception to trust in a new direction for your future. There's almost a moment like the cobwebs get cleared this month, Leo. And you say, I never saw it that way before. I, I, never, I never saw that. This is a new path that has just opened for me and it's fresh, it's exciting, it's adventurous. And I never saw me doing something like that before. But I'm going to do it. Because I'm shifting. You're shifting where you thought you were going with whatever it is you're doing with your relationship, with your career, with your health also, with your passion. You're shifting it all up and taking it all in a new direction. And you're leading the way. You're saying, I'm bringing new magic to my future. I'm bringing new magic. Now, a lot of you could really be bringing magic to something this month. You're the one that's been called on to Sprinkle that extra little sparkly dust on a creative project, on a relationship, on a family event, a family gathering for the holidays. You're the one bringing the magic to that. And that's, that's really incredible. I love that energy. I love, love, love that energy, Leo. Now, what do we have here? We have the the wonderful balancing and juggling act that's going to happen for you mid-month when you change your perspective, when you suddenly see that there's a new direction for you to go in your future. Like I said at the start of the reading, where you don't have to follow the tried and tested methods. You don't have to do whatever, what everybody else is doing. You don't have to follow trends. And you don't have to even build on what has gone before. You can strike up something new and bring balance to that. And I think that's the energy, very much so this month too, Leo. You're getting comfort at home, all those things. You're creating the wonderful atmosphere at home. And this is going to give you that moment where you find your balance again. You find your balance. Some of you could have felt that you were totally knocked off balance by something. You've two cards of finding balance, balance of the mind and balance of the body. Something really threw you, I think, at the end of November, really radically threw you. And there was a bit of a, where am I? What am I going? You remember the old cartoons with Roadrunner and they get knocked and they see stars around. There's kind of that energy of what the hell just happened? But this thing, this is where you're spiraling going, whoa, 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 I need to get balance back after what's just happened. You find new balance. And the new balance, as you're finding it, changes your perception. You've been spun around, but you've landed in a different point of view. Yeah, you, you, you've been, yeah, that's it. You've, you're seeing something different after being spun around by other people or by some situation. 
and you're now saying, I'm going to change this up. I've seen it. I've seen something different and I'm going to make it happen. This is the card of bringing your finances into balance. You, you start the month unsure about whether to go with an idea to make money. And then mid-month you're saying, no, 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 I'm taking, out, taking it out of just being a brainstorming thing, taking it out, taking it out Mercury retrograde, trying to speak during Mer Mercury retrograde, impossible. But I'm taking it out of just the planning stage, the idea stage, the brainstorming stage, and I'm bringing all the pieces together in a practical way. I can make this happen and I trust that it can happen. And I'm not going to listen to the naysayers or, to, or the people who tell me I can't. This is the card of competition. And I want to tell you something, Leo. As you're getting out there in a wonderful, soft space, fourth house and fifth house, soft, emotional, being very creative in a very, you know, when it's just at a little seed and you have to take care of it kind of energy, whatever it is you're doing, be it a relationship or a creative thing, or your life in general. When the critics come, a lot of the times they come out of jealousy and out of fear too. They fear you changing your game plan because then you become an unknown quantity. They, they don't know what to do with you. So they fear the changes and you might find that people are coming to you with their fears of how you're changing, but that's their fears. Let them get over that themselves and you carry on and don't be knocked by somebody battling with you and trying to defeat you. I sense that whatever it is some of you are trying to do creatively, at a very tender moment this month, somebody could really strike you down and say, get back down. This is my space. It's only for me. You don't get to play with the big boys, the big girls, the high rollers. You don't get to do that. No, you don't get to play with them. Why? Because there are bigger than them. And that's where you're aiming for. That's the future. The ones who told you you can't compete on this level, they're actually correct, technically, because you're not going to compete on their level. You're going beyond that. Remember that. Remember, the fire is being lit for a new future for you and a future that takes you maybe up to next levels. And here we have the second royal. You have the king and the queen of wands here, the fiery queen, the fiery royal. And that's you, you are a fiery royal, Leo. But it's about taking control of things again. And it's also about taking control, which we've often spoken about over the, the last few months, about coming out of that sense of poverty consciousness, coming out of that sense of feeling that you have to hold on so tightly to your money, hold on so tightly to what you have, hold on so tightly to your peace of mind, to your emotions, to your heart, hold on, hold on, because this is just a stormy year, just hold on and batten down the hatches. And the Queen looking upon this and saying, Leo, 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 that is not you, look at her looking down. She's saying, Leo, can I have a word with you? Can I just remind you that this is your symbol, the sunflower, the one who always follows the direction of the sun, of your heart, in the fifth place. Look, Leo, look. You have magic. You have intuition. You have deep psychic gifts which have been brought to you by the High Priestess. You have all this wisdom. Don't forget who you are. Come out, come out, come out of your hiding place. Come out of locking yourself in at home. Come out of a, a period of feeling down. Come out, come out. She's reminding you who you are. Now we have the Hierophant, the Hierophant, the Taurus card. So far we have the influence of Pisces, Aquarius, um, a lot of fire energy, and now we have Taurus. So Pisces, Aquarius, and Taurus could be instrumental as catalysts, one way or either positively or negatively this month for you. But they offer you a little road marking of how and when things are going to change. So watch out for that too. 
But the Hierophant is all about recommitting to something new, taking something out of just the land of ideas or the land of feeling or the land of I wish, I wish, I wish, and making it more solid. If there is something you are doing or creating this month, the end of the month, it makes it more solid. Absolutely. Now this is a marriage card and some of you with all the energy and love and romance this month that you could feel very connected to want to really make a strong bond and commitment to somebody. A lot of movement going on in your eighth house too this month of bonding with other people and this could be towards the end, say around the real holiday season, around Christmas or so on like that. There really could be a commitment of true love between you and somebody else or if you're in a relationship making it more stable making practical moves to really commit to this in a meaningful really meaningful way um, also in terms of the spirit with the full moon happening in cancer in your 12th house this is quite a spiritual card um, really the month uh, is quite spiritual for you and there may be a lot of going to places of worship which it, I mean it sounds obvious but I know not everyone who watches my videos uh, subscribe to particular faiths so I, I do acknowledge that but a great many of you are at least feeling the spiritual vibe and maybe going out in nature or going to, to houses of worship to solidify that real feeling it could be somebody, you know, it could be a thing where you just pass by a house of worship and just say, I don't usually do this, but I'm going to go in and maybe light a candle or just go in and feel the vibe or the atmosphere. And I don't know why, you know, but it's that energy of doing that. And in turn, this new feeling that you're getting, the new spiritual that connection that you're getting, takes you out of a feeling of being trapped for the long period that you have felt that, Leo. And I know you have. Being psychologically trapped, being trapped with so many ideas but no avenues to take them down. Um, feeling that every time you wanted to move that you were just trapped. That none of your ideas worked, none of the relationships went the way you thought they would, none of the friendships opened up or developed in the way you felt they could have. There was a, a cap on it or a limit on it. And now it's your faith and it's the shift in energy this month that frees you from that feeling. Now I will say this, for some of you, towards the end of the month, things could radically change. You could find a whole new love for yourself again. And maybe even some of you could find a new love that breaks a bond with an existing love. This is marriage and this is the card of feeling kind of really under some psychological pressure within a committed relationship and there could be so much heaviness there that you could be asking the questions at least by the end of the month, is this a relationship that I want to be staying in when I can see that it's starting to open up for me so Leo, that was my sign. I got cut off there. So that's the sign to bring this to an end. Leo, if you want to know more, remember I am doing the deep read on Vimeo, which we go in deeper to subjects of relationships. If you're looking for love, your career, family matters, friendships, and anything that comes up, we will go into that and go in depth to that. And they're long readings. So we dig deep, so I have that linked below there if that's something you want to know more, know more, get more wisdom. So I invite you cordially to the deep read linked down below. And Leo, I wish you a wonderful December and it was great to have you come through this journey for the whole of 2018 and the next readings will be in the new year. So with all that said and done, let's leave 2018 behind with a big kiss, my gorgeous, and all my love. Until next year, my beautiful.